All right, and we want to uh, greet everyone in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We are grateful for everyone that's here today. My prayer is that something will be said that will uh, help you in your walk with the Lord. All right. If you have your Bibles, let's go to the 22nd chapter of the book of Luke. Twenty-second chapter of the book of Luke. And while you're turning there, um, you know, and uh, we don't say these things lightly, but um, you all, you all should be and feel privileged and blessed um, to be here today. And every week that you come, <clears throat> you ought to feel privileged to be able to uh, come and sit here and get a word from God every week. And we're not talking about a regurgitated word <laughs> or a watered down word, but a word straight from the throne of God. That's every week. You ought to be, you ought to feel privileged if you knew what all goes into it and what all have went into it, you would feel privileged. Many people are going to miss heaven because God spoke something to them that they didn't give heed to because they didn't count his word as precious. In the Bible, uh, whenever there was a lack of prophets around, and God did that on purpose, it would say that the, the word of God was precious in those days. In other words, because the word of God wasn't going forth like it you know, normally would in, in other times. God would purposely only have one prophet or two prophets in the whole earth at a particular time. And so it would say the word of God was precious in those days. In other words, now that we have a prophet on every corner, it's no longer precious, so-called. See, if you're sitting here, you know that that's not the case. It's always precious. The word of God is always precious. But uh, how is it to people that's sitting listening at it? You know, that's, that's, it's dangerous for the word of God to get old to you and... Uh, you know, I preach to you all every week. I can just about go to any church and preach and folks will, will be amazed at what the Lord has to say through my mouth. But here, uh, you know, when you get used to it, uh, it might not be as precious. So it's our job to keep it precious in our hearts, brothers and sisters. You ought to feel privileged. And this ain't, this has... Uh, Again, if you knew it all, went into this word that you're hearing today. You know, you think about it. There's a reason why the devil had his clutches on my mother's womb the first five years of her marriage so that she could not conceive. In that fifth year, my grandmother, my daddy's mother, was in the hospital. And uh, my mother was sitting there with her in the chair, talking with her. And my grandmother fell asleep. And then my mother fell asleep. And when my mother woke up, she said she saw hands like this, if you can imagine now, just coming around her belly and clutching like this. And these were hairy arms and hands, long fingernails. She knew it was the devil. At that time, she was five months pregnant with me, you see. So what was the devil doing? He was letting her know, you may have gotten the victory in conceiving this boy, 
but we're going to hold on to them as long as we can. And she was pregnant another seven months. So all together, she was pregnant with me about 12 months, brothers and sisters. The devil didn't want this word coming forth, you see. That's why you don't take it lightly. You don't know how many battles have been fought behind the scenes for you to be here today hearing what you hear, you see. So you don't take those things lightly. So what do we, what is the war about? What is it about? It's about the word of God going forth and uh, the devil trying to stop it. Now, he knows that he's not going to be able to stop me from preaching. I'll preach as long as the Lord allow me to. But what good is preaching if the hearts of the people aren't prepared to receive what's preached? I might as well be preaching to this podium. So today we're here to let you all know whether you like it or not, you are in a war. You are in a battle. So he lost the battle on my end with my conception, my birth, and my answer to, call, to do what the Lord has called me to do. He's lost that. And he knows that we got plenty of videos up on YouTube. And uh, so th that word is going forth like that. And so now his main job is to war with you and whether or not you receive it. And it's amazing to me how I can preach a word on Sunday and then all during the week, I'm going to see how people were ignoring what was preached on Sunday. And I, I try not, you know, <laughs> my answer to a lot of things is, uh, did you go back, go back and listen to what you heard? The Lord had already given you the answers for what you're going through. But see, what happens is when people don't know they're in a battle, they just think they're just living everyday life. When my mother couldn't conceive me for five years, she didn't go to the doctor to see what was going on. She knew what was going on. This is a war. I'm called to give birth to a prophet, and the devil knows it. This is a spiritual war. So ain't no use in me going to the doctor for him to give me some vitamins. Ain't no use in me buying lingerie to, to try to be more sexy for Big Hawk. This is a spiritual war. Lingerie ain't going to fix this. <laughs> but people, that's what they try to do in their everyday walk with the Lord. If I do this, then this will work. If I do that, then I get this, this. But you're in a spiritual war. And you have to know that, brothers and sisters. If you're going to get victory in life, you have to know, first of all, what battlefield you're supposed to be playing on, you see. You're in a spiritual war. So my mother, she didn't go to doctors and hospitals. She went into prayer lines. She looked and, and, and talked to other saints of the same faith to figure out where is the nearest tent meeting. Where can I go? Who believes in laying hands on people and anointing them with all? That's where I want to be. So she went into prayer line after prayer line for years until I was conceived. And then even after I was conceived, you know, sometimes she, she did exactly what sometimes people do. Uh, they, uh, they get happy about one victory and forget you got another battle coming, see? And so that was the devil letting her know, yeah, you may have conceived this boy, but that don't mean I got to let him be born. And so, of course, my mother, she tells the story that the labor with me was a hard labor. She was begging the midwife to take her life and mine, you see, because it was such a hard labor. And uh, brothers and sisters, I tell you, anything that's, that, that is worth birth birthing is worth going through the labor for. And sometimes that's what people, they don't want to do. And they want the baby without the labor. <laughs> <laughs> don't want to don't want to go through anything but you know our uh, uh, you know in the book of Ecclesiasticus it tells us in the second chapter that great men are born out of adversity the greatness of men in other words they're born out of adversity your, your growth in the Lord has to do with 
the adverse effects that comes, the war that you're in. If you want to know where you stand with God, it is directly related to where you stand with the devil. If the devil is not coming against you, then you don't belong to God. Does everybody understand it now? The devil only comes with people that, that make war with him. <clears throat> Does everybody understand it now? So we have to get out of this mindset <clears throat> of wanting an easy life. Just, uh, devil, I'm, I promise I'm going to be a good Christian. I'm not going to bother you. Just please, just let me into heaven. I'm not going, I'm trying not to, you know. You, oh, you know I'm here? I'm sorry. I didn't mean to say nothing. Just trying to sneak into heaven. <laughs> How in the world do you think you're going to get there when great men of God were sawed in half, were burned, were bawled in awe, and, 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 and gave their neck to the sword happily, did not pray against it, did not fight against it, were grateful to give their neck to the sword? And here it is, you, you can't stand to have a, a, a bee sting. You know, everything is that, you, you know, I guess when you're not ready for real war, you got to make a war out of everything, don't you? That was nothing but the devil that stung me. <laughs> Unfortunately, that's not the way it works. <clears throat> is everybody there, the 22nd chapter of the book of Luke? We're going to go over a few things, and my prayer is that you have a better understanding of what this war looks like and why you are going through it. And uh, uh, a lot of things that we war in, uh, we don't, we have, we, sometimes we don't even know that we're in a war with it. We don't even know that what the battle entails. <sighs> So we're going we're gonna to go over these things to, to help you to have a better understanding. And hopefully it'll help you to look at your everyday life and see it as a battle so that you will make better decisions in everyday life. Is everybody there? The 22nd chapter of the book of Luke. Let's start reading at verse 31. Now, brothers and sisters, before we go into a battle, the Lord always lets us know that we're going into a battle. Now, the best thing we can do as believers, especially in today's age, is to realize that if you, if you call yourself a believer, you're always in a battle. And listen, brothers and sisters, uh, I, I remember when I was younger, I used to love playing this game called uh, Space Invaders. I think that's what it was called. I can't remember now what it was, but it was basically, it was, it was a game where you had your little spaceship and you, you can go side to side and uh, you're killing the enemies as they're coming. And you can't stop the thing from moving. You know, it's not, it's not like you could pause it. So you, you're killing everything that's coming. And as you continue to, to do that and rack up points, it gives you more weapons and more firepower. And so then you use that, you know, because you, you need it for the battle that's down the road. You see, you need it for the things that's coming. They, they get greater and bigger. The opponents get bigger and bigger. And oftentimes, that's the way it is in, when we're in this battle. The further up in, in, in God you go, the more firepower the devil uses and the more, the more weapons he has in his arsenal towards you. Does everybody understand that now? I say, does everybody understand that? So, one of the biggest weapons that the devil uses is offense. And if I choose, and I say that word very, very uh, matter-of-factly, if I choose to walk in offense for the rest of my life, then that's the only rifle the devil needs for me. He don't have to pull out anything else. He ain't got to do nothing. I'm helping him out with my offense. Does everybody understand that now? The devil's got the gun and I got the bullets loading it in for him. Offense. 
That's, 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 that's one of the most simple weapons that he used is offense. And, you know, and he used it against us uh, with our permission. The devil shows us the gun, say, and he, I can't shoot you. Oh, no, okay, devil, I got, I got offense in my pocket. Let me load it up for you. And before you know it, we've made a fool out, out of ourselves, and we're all shot up with offense. And now we've got to get over stuff. Now we've got to forgive, and now we've got to cleanse out, do all of that instead of just laying down offense. Do you know it is possible to live a life without being offended? Now, that's hard for some people to believe because they read the Bible and they misinterpret it where the Lord says uh, offenses must come. Yes, they must come. Just like this podium is here. It must be here. That don't mean I got to eat it. Offenses can come to me. That don't mean I got to take it up and, and take it home with me. It ain't got to get in my heart. So it is possible to live life without being offended. Does everybody understand that now? So, you know, that's, that's first and foremost in this, this spiritual battle, not getting offended. That's because that is, you know, uh, does it make any sense now, brothers and sisters, to play on a basketball team and on a football team and half of your jersey is blue and white and the other half is, is gold and, and purple? You playing for both teams and you scoring for birth, both teams. Does that make any sense? Well, that's the life you live when you decide to take up offense. You plan for both teams. And I can tell you the devil's gonna win every time. You'll get your victory here and there, you know, on God's side, but overall the devil's winning. You gonna always score more points for the devil when you're walking around with offense. So that's the first thing is to lay down offense. Quit loading the devil's gun up. Does everybody see now? And so when we, uh, before we come to Christ, he lets us know, you know, you know what you're into. Now you need to count the cost because you're going to be in a war. And oftentimes um, we don't take it as serious. Let's read now. Is everybody there? Chapter 22 of Luke, verse 31. Look what it says. And the Lord said, Simon, Simon, isn't that something now? Now, you know that's something now. If you've ever lived life long enough to hear somebody call your name twice, his first name wasn't Simon and, his la and, and last name Simon. <laughs> it was just Simon. Does everybody see that now? Now, my question is this. By this time, had the Lord already named him Peter? But he's calling him Simon. <laughs> I wonder why. Let me, let me get to your flesh for a minute. L let, me, let me pull you off of what I've named you, Mr. Rock. And let me, let me talk to your, your flesh, because this is what, what the devil's going to come at. And called him that twice. Simon, Simon. So right away. He could have, something could have jolted him. Wait a minute, that's not the name you normally call. I, I thought you were elevating me. I'm the one that had the, the revelation of who you was and I'm blessed and now I got to go back to Simon? Twice? All right, I hear what you got to say. What, what, what is it, Lord? What did he say? Behold, Satan hath desired to have you that he may sift you as wheat. Everybody see that? Now, I want you to see, we read over these scriptures so much until they don't mean anything. But I want you to think about it. You among your peers, well, you know, most of y'all's talk has to do with who's the greatest and who's doing the most miracles and all of this other stuff. And then to get called by your old name twice. And then to be told, Satan had desired to have you that he may sift you as wheat. Let's read verse 32. Look at what it says. But I have prayed for thee that thy faith fail not. Everybody see that? And when thou art converted, 
do what? Now, right away. Now, here's the thing, brothers and sisters. I can get up here and I can preach what 99% of the preachers are going to preach this morning. You're blessed and highly favored. Y'all get up and go home. Blessing, raise your hand if you're blessed and highly favored. All right, receive the blessing. Go home now because that's all we got. This is just a pep rally. That's all people hear. And usually that's all people want is to hear how blessed they are. But then it comes a time where we have to call you by what we see today and deal with what is there today. We have to give you a proper assessment. Simon, Simon, the devil wants to kill you. He wants to take your life slowly. And look at what he did. He took that out of Peter's hand and told Peter what? I have prayed for you. I prayed for you. Everybody see that? Prayed what? That your faith don't fail. He's talking to somebody that think he's bulletproof with faith already. I done prayed and the Lord done blessed me with a few dollars. I done prayed and this done come through, that done come through, that done come through, that done come through, through my prayer. So why are you telling me you prayed for me that my faith don't fail? Why, Peter? Why, Simon? Because as you continue to go up in Christ, you're going to battle some new devils that you ain't never met before. You didn't know that he was that devious. You were just dealing with his little offensive imps at the very bottom. But as you go up in God, new devils that are stronger than what you've ever come across. So let me remind you of where you come from so that you don't go to sleep. Everybody see that now? Let me, remind, let me remind you of the urgency. Because see, after we done got a few prayers answered and we done saw a few miracles, and then we on easy street. And that's exactly when the devil comes and hits you with something stronger that you've, than you've never been hit with before. Does everybody see that now? And so could you imagine Peter's response? Could you imagine what he must be feeling like? You think about it. He's sitting in front of all his disciples, and he's talking to them. Uh, Lord, you could have called me over to the side for this. You don't need to try to embarrass. This is, this is embarrassing. That's what we would think. If I called you by name and said, look, so-and-so, you need to get right. You need to get on your face before God because the devil's coming for you. But see, uh, it is hard to deal with the pride of people. There have been a couple of times I've stood up here and preached and I've told people, obey the law of the land, do the speed limit. They leave right out here and can't get five miles down the road without getting a ticket. Because pride, pride makes you overlook that speed, and that, that speed limit every single time. Does everybody understand that now? You fall, listen, they're called speed traps for a reason. <laughs> Now, if you have a hard time obeying, do the, do the speed limit. We can't even talk to you about spiritual matters. You're, you're not even ready for the battle yet. Does everybody understand that now? And I'm trying to show you how people ignore natural things. Just, just natural things. I, I just use this as an example. So, uh, you know, I, and I know it, it rubbed a couple of people the wrong way when I was talking about my credit score and um, the buying power that I have. Uh, listen, brothers and sisters. Yeah, I know it did. I wasn't saying that to brag naturally. So the only thing I did was start walking in integrity. I just followed the Bible. I just happened to look up one day and say, oh, that's improving too. Does everybody understand that? That Bible means what it says. You will prosper and be in health, even as your soul prospers. <laughs> so my buying power didn't come from my brain power. It came from obeying his word. <laughs> Does everybody understand that now? That's all. <laughs> now, I wasn't trying to listen, brothers and sisters. God, you know, if we, we can walk with God, well, we can walk in favor with God and man.
And so a lot of times we start thinking we're in a place that we're not. That's why it's important that we always stay low. Stay low. Listen, in war, uh, how many of you ever seen a war movie? The folks that's standing up getting shot. Folks that's laying on, down on the ground, crawling on they, their knees and their elbows, what are they doing? They ducking and dodging bullets. It's hard to hit somebody that's low. So if we stay humble and stay low, we, we're duck and dodge. Most of those bullets, the devil is sending our way. Does everybody see that now? Pride walks on his feet and gets shot by the devil every single time. And so here, <laughs> Mr. Simon was walking on his feet and the Lord was trying to humble him. Look, little fella, I know you got to walk on water for a few seconds. I understand all that. I know you got the revelation of who I was. I understand all of that. And I promoted you in front of people, letting them know that you were a piece of who I am and what you all you're going to do. I understand all of that. But the devil don't stop doing what he's doing because you've, you've took, taken the next step. Because God have elevated you. In fact, when God elevated you, elevates you, you're just more of a target. So you need to be on guard. Be on guard. So if you can imagine what that must have done to Peter. You imagine now, because oftentimes people get on this spiritual high. Spiritual high, spiritual high, spiritual high. And then when somebody come along and tell them, hey, listen, I'm glad that you've had those experiences with God, but you stay watchful. Then they feel like you just dead busting a bubble. Why every time the Lord... <laughs> See, and that's your problem right there. Because every time. Does everybody see that now? I just feel like you're here to discourage me. Okay, well, go on down. Before the week is up, you'll be calling asking for prayer and trying to figure out what happened. I don't know what happened. Pride happened. Does everybody see now? You're not going to whoop the devil with his own weapon. The devil is the king of pride. That's what the Bible says. He's the king of pride. How in the world are you going to whip him with it? <laughs> Does everybody see that now? All right. So look at what he says. Verse 33. Look at what uh, you think about that. Now, that's a heavy verse. Verse 32. I have prayed for thee that thy faith fail not because it may. And when thou art converted, because you're not converted yet, strengthen thy brethren. And I'm telling you, folks have a hard time. All you got to do is praise them one time. And, it, you know, does everybody understand it now? You think about it like a, a wife, she doesn't master cooking beans. And then one day she just have a bad day, leave them on the stove too long, and they start smoking or whatever. And then you have to tell them, no, that, that didn't come out right. I want something else. Uh, you know, that's, that's hard. And she's got to go in a prayer closet and pray. Lord, I, I, I am a good wife. Well, yeah, what, what the beans, I'm, we're not talking about you, it's the beans. This ain't got nothing to do with you. Didn't, you still saved? <laughs> you know how folks are. They get discouraged over everything. They throw, that's what you call, call throwing the baby out with the bathwater. <laughs> it's like, just don't question me about nothing. I'm saved, my beans saved, rice saved, everything saved. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. The bear, I'm gonna eat them. I'm gonna eat them. <laughs> and so, we have to be careful that while we are elevating in the things of God, that we can still receive correction, and, and we can still we still don't mind being checked about where we are, checking ourselves and. Uh, and uh, having those, those real talks, see. And so here, verse 33, look at Peter's response. And he said unto him, Lord, I am ready to go with thee both into prison and to death. One way, brothers and sisters, you know whether or not offense have snuck in or whether or not you're really ready for the battle is when you become defensive, and when you feel the need to defend yourself 
Again, all the law was telling them was, look, Peter, the devil's after you. I done prayed for you, and I, I'm, I'm just putting you on, on, you know, on, on, uh, on alert. The devil is after you, and he's wanting to sift you as wheat. But I prayed for you that your faith don't fail you. You know, all he's really trying to do is put him on alert. But Peter comes back with, I am on alert. You, what you're saying, I already know, and I'm ready, to go to, I'm ready to go to death with you. I'm ready to go through whatever I got to go through. So, you know, when people feel the need to defend themselves, that lets you know that they're not ready for the battle and they're going to fail. Does everybody see that now? Verse 30, now, you know, the law was done talking. Well, look at what happened. Verse 34, and he said, I will tell thee, Peter, the cock shall not crow this day before that thou shalt thrice deny that thou knowest me. I didn't want to tell you that. And this wouldn't have even been a thing had you just accepted what I was telling you. So what was the Lord? What was the Lord? Was the Lord prophesying defeat on him? No, he did it to himself. Just the fact that you sat here and called me a liar, you're going to fail. <laughs> so it's already a done deal. I'm telling you it's going to happen because of what you just told me. You did not receive, Peter, uh, Simon, what I just said. Does everybody see that now? So you've already, you've already lost. You you going you going <laughs> you going to lose three times before the chickens wake up. <laughs> the devil going to get you early. <laughs> Isn't that something now? The chickens became his sign. But good and early, before anybody's woke even, you're going you gonna to deny me three times. You know why? Because he denied him then. Does everybody see that now? So it's important, brothers and sisters, if we know that we are in a war, that we assess what weapons we have. We assess whether or not we are ready Everything that the Lord presents to us as believers is designed to equip us for this war. Does everybody understand it now? Let's, I want to I wanna go down. Let's, let's read verse 39 now. It says, and he came out and went as was his want in other words his custom to mount of olives to the mount of olives and his disciples also followed him and when he was at the place he said unto them pray that ye enter not into temptation and he was withdrawn from them about a stone's cast and kneeled down and did what what did he do what did he do now wait a minute now why is this in the bible for us today I want you to think about something. And, I, and I, brothers and sisters, I, you know, let's really think about this. Jesus Christ had already healed the sick, raised the dead. There were some cities where no matter who they brought to him, they were healed. The Bible says he healed all of them. He healed all that were sick. So he had a very, very good track, track record. And it wasn't too long ago that he had raised a man from the dead that had been dead for four days bypassing even natural law of being decayed. Now, could you imagine now? Because anybody that understand that, you understand this, that if he could raise a man that was dead uh, from the dead uh, for four days, had been dead for four days, he could raise a man from the dead that had been dead for four centuries. It's the same thing. Your body have already set into decay. Does everybody see that now? So he had that great thing that great reputation and all of those works validating who he was and how much favor he had with God. And listen, he still went to pray because he knows all of this that I've done, it equals a greater war that I'm about to have to fight. Now, we could take that one of two ways. We could either take it like he took it, I know the more God uses me, the more the devil is going to come for me. Or 
we can take it the way a lot of people take it. The more God uses me and validates me, it equals easy street for me. I ain't got to pray as much. That's the reason why he told his disciples, pray that you enter not into temptation. Don't, 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 don't enter into temptation. Don't go to sleep on the devil. Does everybody see now? Now, here's a question I, I want us each, all of us to ask ourselves this. Where am I now in this battle? Am I losing or am I winning? Because you're in a battle. And I can tell you this, if you haven't already assessed the battle, you're losing. If you've assessed it, you need to know where you are. I, I, I say this, you know, most of the time, listen, brother, and I want to make this clear. I'm always in a battle. Somebody always doing something, always just crazy stuff. I say it that way. I don't know. Uh, me, I'm the same all the time. Because my faith is in God. And, uh, I, it just, I just feel like whenever, I, no matter what battle I'm in, God has, con, has cocooned me in his peace. So, you know, I have the ability to go through a whole lot of things, a whole lot of things. And uh, it not affect my spirit at all because I rest in God. But, but think about this. And I, you know, and I can stand here and I can tell you just about everything I've gone through and just basically remain the same about it. But I want you to think about this. How are you? Do you have peace now when ain't nothing going on? How, how are you right now? Are you always raging, raging, raging and ain't nothing going on? Nothing bad's happening. Ain't no devil coming against you. Nothing nothing just you know in other words he's using your own emotions your own stuff your own weapons and things against you because of what you've conjured up and what you refuse to release do you know it's not meant uh for people to be stressed out when the bible when god when the lord listen if the lord wrote in this bible everything that he said and what it has to do with everything with life, we would never be done reading the Bible. The Bible would be bigger than this building here. So he just tells us things and he expects for us to follow them because he's God. He tells us in his word, be not anxious. Isn't that what he says? You don't have to wait until you get high blood pressure and go to the doctor and they tell you, you need to stop worrying. Stop being anxious. Your anxiety. And folks will walk around with a badge of honor that they have an anxiety attacks. Yeah, I've had a few of those. <laughs> yeah, I disobeyed God's word. I was anxious. High blood pressure, heart attacks, strokes. Be not anxious. Does everybody see that? So the Lord don't want to run down what all it's going to do to your physical body. Just know God didn't build you to be anxious. Think about anxiety this way. I, I, years ago, my wife and I, we bought our house, uh, the one that we had owned previously. Uh, it had a... Uh, it had a uh, fireplace in it. And uh, at the front of that fireplace, uh, in it, it had a latch that you could pull this way or that way. In, winter, uh, in the summertime, you close the latch to keep the cold weather from coming down through there. In the wintertime, when it's time to start building fires, you open the latch. Well, one day I built a fire and I forgot to open the latch. How many of you have ever had that happen? Right now, get it up high. There you go. What happened? Did the smoke dissipate and just grace covered it? No, the whole family crying and running around trying to figure out what's on fire. Now try sticking your hand in there to, to open a latch. Let's see. That's what happened to us a few years ago. That's the way I look at anxiety. 
God didn't build you with a chimney on your head for you, for you to have anxiety and it's just got, it's got a release going up through your head. You're not supposed to have it. Stop building that fire. Because other than that, all you're going to do is smoke your heart out. Does everybody understand that? So quit looking for reasons to worry. That's how busybodying is. I'm worried. Oh, I got to see a piece of trash. Now I got to do a whole detail of the house. No, you need to put that energy. Go bury your face in the Bible. Does everybody understand that now? Just that, that's all it is, is anxiety. Sit down somewhere. <laughs> you know, it's a shame. And maybe, maybe we need to start putting some scriptures on them brooms and mops. Maybe you'll know the Bible then. Since you, you're handling that more than the word of God. So God didn't build us to take on anxiety. Does everybody see that now? And if we're not careful, just those ways. So we can say, oh, I'm in a spiritual war. The devil's coming against my health. But whose help does he have? He told you not to be anxious. And you ain't got to blame your high blood pressure on the devil. Blame it on your disobedience. Does everybody understand that now? So again, now this is what we're pointing out. Part of our battle is ourself. Why, why would the devil need to come against us if we disobey in the word? Does everybody understand that now? And so here was Jesus Christ. All of the miracles he had done, he didn't think that validated him for the next battle. All it did was make me know, you know what? I need to pray more. I need to get closer to my father, even more closer than what I already am. Because the devil is taking note of these miracles. And he's going to send more imps my way. Does everybody see that now? So if you keep reading, you'll see how much, um, how much he prayed earnestly to receive strength to go through what he was supposed to go through. He understood this is a battle. And, and if I'm not careful, I'm going to lose. The brothers and sisters, I want to make this clear. He did not have to go to the cross. And, and nobody, nobody even knew at that time, nobody even knew that he had come here to die. He was telling them, I'm coming to die. And they still rejected him. No, you're not going to die. We got swords. So he could have easily have just bypassed the cross and nobody would, we'd have just said, Jesus Christ was the son of God. He was a great man. And we'd all still been going to hell. He already did what, does everybody understand that now? But he understood if I want to go and fulfill my complete purpose in God, I know that there's going to be a battle. I know that there's going to be a war and I need to pray. I need to make sure I am where I need to be. You know, that's the very reason why the Lord never married. Because he didn't need that for a distraction. And I'm telling you, brothers and sisters, there's very few people that could get to that place and have a wife and, 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 be, it, and, and, let, and be as though he have none. Does everybody see that now? That's the reason why, sisters, we preach the way we preach about wives. You want a godly husband, get, out of the, get yourself out of the way. He don't need a nag. He need to be able to hear from God, not from you. Does everybody understand that now? <laughs> and so you see exactly what the Lord said had happened. Let's go, let's go down to verse 54. Then took they him, talking about the Lord, and led him and brought him into the high priest's house. And Peter, Peter followed how? How did he follow? Everybody see that now? And when they had kindled a fire in the midst of the hall, 
and were set down together, Peter sat down among them. But a certain maid beheld him as he sat by the fire and earnestly looked upon him and said, This man was also with him. And he denied him, saying, Woman, I know him not. And after a little while, another saw him and said, Thou art also of them. And Peter said, Man, I am not. And about the space of one hour after another confidently, everybody see that? Do you see he still hadn't caught on? We know at least an hour passed, and he's, he's just continuing down this road. Not one time is it dawning on him what he just heard a couple of hours ago. Not one time is it coming to him, wait a minute, wait, just wait a minute. The Lord said, I was going to deny him three times. Now I'm two in. Uh-uh, uh-uh, devil, I got you. I got you. No, what none of that. And that's what happens, brothers and sisters. When we reject the word here, before Wednesday, you'll be to deny them three times. You'll be on the other side of it before you know you even going through it. <laughs> Does everybody see that now? That's the way it is, brothers and sisters. The Lord always prepares his people for the war. But see, the, the problem is, it's not that big of a deal to them. Well, I wonder why. Why Pastor Bolden mentioned doing the speed limit? That don't make no sense. Until that cop got you pulled over. Does everybody understand it now? Until you giving away money. I tell you what, next time one of y'all get a ticket, come get me. Since y'all like giving away money, I'll take some. I got children I could put through college. <laughs> Does anybody, when you get that rich, and I'm telling you, that's money that don't have to be given away. Does anybody understand that now? That's for nothing. You're going five miles over the speed limit for what? So you can get home a minute early? No, I'll wait. Does anybody see that now? I tell you, brothers and sisters, I, I want to address that since we're here. Your car pay for it. It ain't just the tickets you pay. You know, your vehicle is not meant to be treated like a whore. I, did y'all hear what I said now? I know you think that that's just a machine and it's just supposed to do what you tell it to do, but I can promise you it's not a race car. You ought to treat it like God blessed you with it. And people are anxious and they drive like they're anxious. If you want to know what's going on in, in your life, just pay attention to how you drive. Don't take it out on the car. Get out and eat some grass. <laughs> Does everybody understand that now? Because <laughs> I'm telling you, that ain't nothing but a bill. You, it, it's not meant for you to be hard on vehicles. You need, to, you need to go sit down somewhere and try to figure out, why am I so aggressive with driving? I'll tell you why. Because it's smoke building up on the inside of here. It's smoke building up on the inside of here. Does everybody see that now? And so here was Peter. The Lord had just preached the message to him and told him, I pray for you, Peter, telling you the devil's coming for you. No, nah, he ain't coming. Even if he come, I'm going to get the victory because I'm willing. I know me. I know me. Okay. Well, let me tell you this, Simon. <laughs> By the time the chicken's rolling over in bed and ready to eat breakfast. <laughs> so that was one spiritual war that he lost. He lost it because, listen, I want to make this clear. Every time you come and sit here, the Lord is preparing you for the battle out there. And if you're failing out there, it's because you're not listening here. That's all it is. That's all it is. The word that you get here, brothers and sisters, there's no way the devil should be winning in your life. No way. No way. 
Uh, you know, Jesus Christ told those apostles, go ye into the world and make disciples of men. Isn't that what he said? So do you understand what that means? Do, uh, let me put it this way. Do you know nobody is a disciple of Jesus Christ today? You can only be a disciple. You can only be disciple by flesh and blood. Nobody, Jesus Christ isn't discipling anybody. He's gone. He's not in this earth like that anymore. Does everybody understand that now? Which is why Peter, which is why Paul had to say, be ye followers of me, even as I am of Christ. Paul don't have any disciples today. So the discipleship gets passed on to people. Does everybody understand that now? This man whose book we're reading now, Luke, he was a disciple of Paul. But today, so let's say, think, think about this. If I can tell you, give you an aspect about my life, if I can say, talk about the favor that I have with, with people, how the Lord just put things in my lap, how we walking in integrity. There's no way you should be attached to this ministry and you're going downhill. Whatever I'm excelling at, if you're a disciple of mine, you're supposed to be excelling at. If you're not excelling in those areas that I'm excelling in, it means that you're not a disciple of mine. That's all it means. It means that you're rejecting what I've said and you think it's a light thing. Does everybody understand that now? So if I say that I, I'm doing this, then you're doing this. That, that's, you're supposed to be following what I'm doing. Does everybody understand that now? Listen, but that's for disciples. That's for disciples. So a lot of times people come here and they got their own way of living and ain't nobody going to tell me nothing. We all different. See, I've heard all that foolishness. Folks, folks send me that after they leave. We ain't all supposed to be the same. When the Bible says we're supposed to have the same judgment. This word of God says we're supposed to have the same judgment. Does everybody understand that now? Some folks keep it. You just trying to run my household. No, we just preaching this Bible. Let it run your household. Now, if I say, thus said the Lord, this is what's in God's word, and you're doing something different in your home, you're not a disciple of mine or Jesus Christ like what you may think. And I'm telling you, if I'm getting the results of peace, what results are you going to get? If you reject what I say about finances and about walking in integrity and I got good credit, what kind of credit do you think you're working on? If I say I have favor with man and you don't have any, then what's the problem with you? Ain't nobody going to tell you nothing. You your own man. At least that's what you think. Does everybody understand that now? Do you know... <clears throat> And, I, I, you know, I don't think I'm anywhere in the Lord. I really don't. I don't think because I, I, and I, and I say that to say this, brothers and sisters. I don't care how great you get in God. You can spend years and years. And listen, and I'm saying this because I don't want it to break your heart if it ever happened to you. You can spend years and years and years and years watching your reputation. Just watching it. Ain't nobody going to be, you ain't going to be able to say that about me. You ain't gonna be able to see that about me. I'm, I'm, look, I'm clean. I'm a clean preacher. And then one day a lie happens. And all of that went down the pot. Now you're crying, you're depressed because you done spent years making sure you got a good reputation. And then when you get my age, you start thanking God about it. Thank you, Lord. Because I was moving in pride and didn't know it. <laughs> Thank you, Lord, because I thought I was somewhere. And even though I do, even though I, I'm only concerned now about my reputation with you, because folks going to think what they want to think anyway. You see that? So we don't want you to get your hearts broke <laughs> if it ever happened to you. <laughs> Does everybody understand that now? So you can spend years and years building up your reputation, doing all of these things, and then for what? For nothing.
My mother, she tells a story of how uh, before her and my father got married, uh, she wanted to go clean my father's house. And she had called my, my father's uh, little sister, w- which was really his niece biologically, and asked her, she said, uh, Tiny, I want you to come, uh, come with me to Hawk's house to clean it. She said, because I don't want anybody to think I'm in, up in, in his house living in there or laying up with him. And my cousin told her, she said, now, Dolores, I'll, I'll go with you over here to Hawk's house and be there while you're cleaning it. And she said, but we don't ever get too good for people not to talk about us. And that was a lesson that she had learned, you see. To the pure, all things are pure. You could just be in that cleaning the house. <laughs> Does everybody understand that now? You ain't got to be in there making babies. You could just, you really could just be in there cleaning the house. I'll tell you what, brothers and sisters, it's a blessing to get free from what people think. And so, listen, back to this, we're called to be disciples. That means if I'm walking in victory in areas, you're supposed to be walking in victory in areas. That's what it's about. Whatever I'm victorious in, that's what you're supposed to be victorious in. So, for years, I admired Brother Junior. And, uh, you know, again, his daughter rode my bus. Of course, we were in his church for the first first few years of my life. And uh, he lived in the same neighborhood I lived in. So, uh, my, we, his, his youngest daughter and I, we rode the same bus. So, we would pass by his house and uh, his daughter would get on the bus. And uh, he would be sitting on the porch most of the time, either checking all on his vehicle or cutting his grass or something like that. And I would always look like that's that's Brother Junior. And then as I got when I got older and uh, went into the ministry, and he and I I got in touch with him. Um, I knew that he had a lot more wisdom than what I had, and the only way I knew to receive what he had was to sit under him and that's what I did that naturally so one of my daughters sitting here now she'll tell you how much time I spent with him just it, I, you know I would go over to his house at least four days a week sometimes more sometimes every day of the week and I might be there for a whole nine ten twelve hours just sitting there talking to him and one of the reasons why I felt the urgency about that was because when he and I first started talking he was telling me that uh, about the vision that he had about the young man that the Lord was going to raise up. And the way he explained it was, he said, the Lord showed me that the young man he was going to raise up to take my place, what I'm preaching and teaching was going to be a drop in a bucket concerned to the wisdom and understanding he was going to give me, give this young man. And he said, I believe in my whole heart you're that young man. He said, because when you first came to see me, that's the first thing that come to my mind was that vision that I had. So when I first went to see him, he didn't know who I was, you know, and uh, I had to tell him who I was because he hadn't seen me in years. And so him saying that, he said, so the Lord was showing me this about the man that he's going to raise up after I've gone off the scene, which was his way of saying after he dies. So that let me know there's not there's not this long overlap. So I knew then I need to get in there and get whatever wisdom I can get from him. Now, if I was a proud, arrogant somebody, and he, if he'd have told me that, you know, the, the Lord showed me that the, what I'm preaching and teaching is just going to be a drop in a bucket concerning the wisdom and understanding he's going to get his young man. If I was arrogant and proud, I wouldn't have had no need for him after that. You done, already, you done validated me. I don't need, what am I going to come sit under you for? If I'm already got the, if I, if, if you just a drop in the bucket, except in my heart, it wasn't a drop in the bucket. Does everybody understand that now? Everybody needs to be disciples. <laughs> Does everybody, what he was talking about was the capacity that I had. I can, I can have a bucket this big and with no wisdom in it. If I'm proud, it's going to be empty. But if I see the need to have something poured into me, then it can be poured into me. Does everybody understand that now? 
So we, we're talking about spiritual warfare. We're talking about battles, brothers and sisters. The first thing we have to do is make sure that we're not playing against ourselves to make sure that we're not the one shooting a gun and then getting shot by it. Peter rejected what the Lord had told him, and because he rejected it, he lost. The devil didn't have to send his big guns blazing after Peter. Peter's pride was all. Does everybody see that now? So one of the ways the devil attacks us is through us. Let's go real briefly. Let's go to the fifth chapter of the book of Mark. And we're going to answer a question that a brother has sent in. Fifth chapter of the book of Mark. We're going to start reading at verse 1. What it says. It says, And they came over unto the other side of the sea, into the country of the Gadarenes. And when he was come out of the ship, immediately there met him out of the tombs a man with an unclean spirit who had his dwelling among the tombs, and no man could bind him, no, not with chains, because that he had been often bound with fetters and chains, and the chains had been plucked asunder by him, and the fetters broken in pieces, neither could any man tame him. Everybody see that? So we're talking about a wild man because of this spirit that he had. Everybody see that now? Uh, now, brothers and sisters, oftentimes when we read this, we think about somebody that's just out in the wilderness, just hairy, and, you know, they look like an animal. But let's pay attention to what that last part says. Neither could any man do what? It's folks. How can I put it? Ain't living out in the wild like this. The same spirit. Does everybody understand that now? You ain't got to be hairy to not want to be tamed. This Bible is meant to tame us. Does everybody understand that now? So if you're a, reb if you're a rebel in heart, you, you're dealing with the same spirit this man got. You ain't got to go and eat, eat grass to be him. Just don't want to be tamed. Does everybody understand that now? Yeah, let's make that clear now, brothers and sisters. So we'll, we'll understand what demon possession is. You don't have to be out in the, in the, in the, in the sitting on tombstones to be demon possessed. There's a whole lot of folks got this spirit, and, and how you know you got it? You don't want to be tamed, don't want to be told nothing. Can't nobody tell you nothing. It's, this, it's that same spirit. Does everybody understand that now? Now, let's make no mistake about it, brothers and sisters. Uh, that spirit don't mind being cute. It does its own hair and all of that. In this one, now you might not be breaking chains, <laughs> you, you, but does everybody see that now? Yeah, that, that spirit done upgraded. Yeah, it gets its hair done and all that. Grooms itself and all. It ain't looking wild no more. Look what it says, verse 5. And always, night and day, he was in the mountains and in the tombs, crying and cutting himself with stones. Everybody see that now? But when he saw Jesus afar off, he ran and did what? What did he do? What did he do? Does that make any sense? Full of the devil, full of the devil, and ran and worshiped Jesus Christ. Full of the devil, full of them, a legion of them, and still ran and worshiped Jesus Christ. Everybody see that now? Now, let's think of it this way. What did he do? What did he do now? But listen, verse 7, 
and cried with a loud voice and said, What have I to do with thee, Jesus, thou son of the most high God? I adjure thee by God that thou torment me not. You see the, the contradiction there. There he is worshiping him and telling him, don't torment me. Folks come here. They love worshiping, but the word torments them. Does everybody see that now? Oh, it, it gets under their skin. I don't like the way you said it. I don't like that you said it. That's something there. Folks voluntarily worship God and then can't stand God's word, tormented by it. Now, you have to know, brothers and sisters, listen, you have to assess yourself. Where am I in this spiritual battle? Whose team am I playing on? Does everybody see that now? So we just wanted to point that out since we were there. But isn't it a strange thing, brothers and sisters, that this spirit went and worshiped Jesus Christ and couldn't stand him? So then you have to know there must have been another reason for the worship. Everybody see that now? Let's go ahead. Let's go to the 16th chapter of the book of Acts. We'll, we'll answer this. The 16th chapter of the book of Acts. Now, again, I, we, we, I want y'all to keep your mind on what we're talking about. You're under attack. And that's the way you're supposed to look at life. You are under attack. Don't be so caught up in yourself to where you don't know that you are under attack. Does everybody understand that? If you know that if you're able to catch, you know what? This is an attack of the enemy. Then you could do something about it. But if you're under attack and you don't know you're under attack, you're going to lose. Does everybody see that? Is everybody there at the 16th chapter of the book of Acts? Let's start reading at verse 16. And it came to pass as we went to prayer, a certain damsel possessed with a spirit of what? Met us, which brought her masters much gain by what? What was she doing now? What, how did she bring much gain? Does everybody understand what Sue's saying is? It's what goes on in church around this world. What's the first part of that word? Soothe. Nothing being preached that's going to challenge your flesh. We just want to soothe and comfort you in your sin. So there are a lot of preachers today in the pulpit that's got the same spirit of divination that this woman had. They just up soothe saying. That's what makes it hard on preachers like myself. Because I'm not going to soothe say. I'm a God say. You can go comfort yourself later on, however you choose to. Does everybody understand that now? I, I just know this. People in hell don't get breaks. They don't get water breaks. So we try our best to keep you from going there. Does everybody understand that now? <laughs> so she brought her master's much gain by what? What was she known for? We'll say that now. Sue's saying. Look at what it says, verse 17. The, the same followed Paul and us and cried, saying, These men are the servants of the Most High God would show unto us the way of salvation. Everybody see that? Was she lying? Was she lying? And this did she many days. But Paul being what? Was Paul grouchy? What did he do? He turned and said to what? The spirit, I command thee in the name of Jesus Christ to come out of her. And he came out the same hour. Everybody see that? So what was it that was saying that? It was the spirit that was saying that. 
Don't that look like what we just read in the book of Mark? So what was the purpose? What was the spiritual battle there? Flattery. Flattery. Listen, brothers and sisters, one of the most dangerous and biggest secrets of hell is flattery. People needing approval. People doing things to get a pat on the back. It is a spirit. Does everybody understand it now? Did I say, does everybody understand it? That spirit went and worshiped Jesus Christ, not because he's the king of kings and lord of lords. He wanted to flatter him so he would catch him off guard. The Lord was there to cast the flattering devil out. But you can't cast the devil out when you're looking for him to pat you on the back. So flattery, doing things for an applause. You did good. That was good. Does everybody understand that now? Do you know, I think my wife is one of the best cooks, but she don't hear that every day. Not every week, not every month. Does everybody understand that now? And it is dangerous, brothers and sisters, to live life looking at what people think about you, look, just, look, just looking for approval and from the wrong folks. Does everybody see that now? So Paul was grieved by that spirit. He knew, yeah, you telling the truth. You telling the truth. But you're here to torment me with your flattery. Brothers and sisters, flattery is one of the biggest things that throws people off and out of this spiritual battle. Does everybody understand it now? One of the last things you want to do is praise people when they can't handle it. You tell somebody they're a good cook, next minute you get it, it's going to get burnt. <laughs> God is obligated to keep you humble. Burnt grits and all. <laughs> Does everybody understand that? Because everybody can't handle it. Does everybody see that now? So it's a spiritual battle, brothers and sisters, and it is a real weapon that the devil uses. It's flattery. And God tells us in his word. In fact, let's go look at that real briefly. Let's go to the 30th chapter of the book of Isaiah. We're going to go there real quick. We'll try to hurry along so we can get through this. Isaiah 30. So what did Paul do with that spirit? He can't, he, you know what? The average person would do what? You come on, lost sent you here to minister to me because I need some encouragement. Is that what it was? <laughs> yeah, because everybody's talking bad about me all the time. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for this, for this <laughs> confirmation. Because I was beginning to question myself whether or not I was a real man of God. Is that what Paul said? No, devil, I know you're telling the truth for now. But you're not going to soothsay me into hell. I need, to, I need to stay focused. Does everybody understand that? And flattery does everything but keep people focused. <laughs> does everybody see now? The 30th chapter of the book of Isaiah. We're going to start reading at verse 8. Now, go, write it before them in a table, and note it in a book that it may be for the time to come forever and ever that this is a rebellious people, lying children, children that will not hear the law of the Lord, which say to the seers, see not, and to the prophets, what? Prophesy not unto us right things. Speak unto us smooth things. Prophesy deceits. 
And that's what you got all around the world. A bunch of preachers with that spirit of divination. And folks don't even know they're being lullabied. Folks don't even know they can go hear somebody preach this. Think about this. What if this girl, what if somebody with this same spirit of divination start their own church? You might come there not possessed, but before you leave, you're going to be possessed. Does everybody understand that now? That is what people want. Divination. They want soothsaying. They want to be flattered, and they don't even know that this is a form of spiritual war. The devil will fight you with swords or with flattery. You, you pick. I choose swords. Does everybody understand that now? <laughs> if you somebody, you always got to get, you know, <laughs> reinforced and positivity. <laughs> Does everybody see that now? Because think about what does it do to you as a person to always want to be flattered. You know what happens? You get drunk off of it. You start thinking you're more than what you are. You start thinking you arrived. And what does it do? It moves you further and further away from being able to be corrected. Peter wanted flattery. That day the Lord didn't have it. I'm telling you the devil coming for you, Peter. And it, it broke his little heart, and he got offended because he was used to what? Blessed are you, Simon Barjona, because flesh and blood didn't reveal this to you. Oh, thank you. You know, I, I've been telling these fellas around me. <laughs> Y'all going to know I'm somebody. <laughs> so flattery. That's one of the biggest tools the devil uses. Does everybody understand that now? And it don't mean that we don't reverence people. It don't mean that we don't speak highly of them. But listen, brothers and sisters, we better know the intentions of people. I, I've had people come be a part of this ministry, and I'm all kind of prophets until they leave. And then I'm a false prophet, which is why I didn't listen to I'm all kind of prophets. Does everybody understand that now? Yeah, I don't, that don't, I, I, I don't need nobody to tell me that. I don't even have to be one. Does everybody understand that now? I just want to live and make it to heaven. I don't care what title I got on this earth. So flattery, that's what the devil was using. He wanted to throw Jesus Christ off with that. Could you imagine now? What if the Lord was sitting there and, the, and this, this devil come up worshiping him? The law would have just laid down and went to sleep if he'd have took it. And that's what flatter does. Think of flatter that way. It's a song that the devil sings to get, put you to sleep. To take your attention off of what it's supposed to be on. Does everybody see that now? Let's go. Now, you know, the Bible gives us a word. Let's go to the third chapter of the book of Colossians real quick. The Bible gives us a word. To combat that. Now, again, brothers and sisters, the Lord just expects us to obey his word and walk in humility. Now, my prayer is that we'll be broke free from this flattery stuff. Because I'm telling you, that's one of the biggest tools the devil uses. And all it does is it makes it hard for you to receive correction. Does everybody understand it now? Now, you ought to be on both sides of it. Now, I, you know, listen, I'm not saying that when people compliment you, you rebuke the devil because it's not always the devil. <laughs> but I'm telling you, you pay attention to your reaction in your heart. Does everybody understand it now? That's all you got to do, pay attention. Is everybody there in the third chapter of the book of Colossians? We're going to start reading in verse 22. Look what it says now. Servants, obey in all things your masters according to what? According to what now? According to what? Not with what? As who? As who now? 
but in singleness of heart, doing what? Doing what now? Everything you do, cooking grits, you ought to do it because you fear God. Not to get a pat on the back. Not for eye service. In other words, not for people, people ought not to even know you cook the grits. Whatever you do, it ought to be towards God. Does everybody understand that now? Other than that, you already have your reward. That's why you got to be careful with it. Does everybody see? Somebody say, oh, these are some good grits. And you say, yeah, I, I, you know, this time I was really praying and, and seeking the Lord about it, and he just told me to stir that pot a few more times, and that, it came out good, see. Uh, you better give God glory for grits. Does everybody understand that now? Because the Lord will fix it where you'll never cook another good grit in your life. <laughs> and no use of saying, well, my season with grits is up. It's time for me to move on to something else. And the Lord's going to burn that too. <laughs> I'll tell you, but listen, why we say that? Verse 23, and whatsoever ye do. Does everybody see that? Whatsoever you do, cooking grits, whatever you're doing, do it heartily as to who and not unto who. Why? That's to keep the flattering demon from coming and lullabying you to sleep. That's for your sake. Stop doing things for a pat on the back and getting offended when you don't get the pat. If you do it as unto the Lord, it fixes everything. Relationships get broken, folks' feelings get hurt, all of that, because nobody knows just how much you're laboring behind the scenes and doing how much it took. You had to grow the grits. <laughs> you prayed over them. <laughs> Does everybody see? Yeah, we all do that. <laughs> Does everybody understand now? That's self-entitlement. How can the Lord reward a brat? How can you be blessed when you're blessing yourself? That, you know, what it is, what, is, what happens, what, people get that way because they need to heal. That's all it is. You need somebody, somewhere, something in you got you feeling like you're not sufficient. And so you go buy up all the grits in Walmart to be sufficient. You cooking and volunteer for everybody. If I do this, if I do that, sit down. The Lord knows your heart. Does everybody understand that now? If you're doing things for God, you ain't got to get one pat, not a one, from flesh. Does everybody see that now? Look what it says. And whatsoever you do, do it how? With your whole heart, in other words, as to who? And not unto who? So you cooking for God. Why are you waiting no man to compliment you? Does everybody see that now? So if you have this mindset, brothers and sisters, you can avoid all of the extra stuff. You know relationships are broken because nobody knows just how much you did for them. People take advantage. That's, that's where that come from. People take advantage of me. You wouldn't even recognize that if you obeyed this Bible here. Ain't nobody taking advantage of you if you're doing it as unto the Lord. Now try telling God he's taking advantage of you. Everybody see that now? Ain't nobody taking advantage of nobody if you're obeying this, what we just read here. If you're doing it as unto the Lord. And you know the Lord is thirsty. Does everybody understand that now? I said he thirsty. He could never get enough of it. Does everybody see that now? Now you'll understand this scripture uh, a little bit better. Let's go to the 17th chapter of the book of Luke. And then we'll close. Seventeen chapter of the book of Luke, and we're going to start reading at verse 7. It 
So you see now, brothers and sisters, how <clears throat> vast of an arsenal the devil has at his disposal. People fishing for compliments. That's all social media is about anymore. People depending on likes. Women half dressing for the purpose of compliments, for flattery. Now, the sad part is, if you're the person fishing for compliments and approval in that manner, then all you're doing is hiring somebody with a spirit of divination. And you'll pay heavily because that spirit is never satisfied. Does everybody understand what I'm saying now? You can, and I, let me prove it to you. You can have a woman who in her husband's heart, she's the most gorgeous woman in the world. He don't want another woman. She, that's all he wants is her. But that won't be enough. She need to hear somebody else say she look good. Why is that? Because there's something on the inside of her that's not healed. And she's pulling for the soothsaying. Yeah, I'm married to you. Of course, you don't count. You're only paying my bills and giving me children and taking care of me. That don't, what's that? I need, I need a stranger to tell me. Folks that I don't know because I can trust them. <laughs> Does everybody see that now? And all you got is a bunch of broken people on social media that don't like each other, but they pretending to. I wouldn't want to live that life. I would not want my happiness to depend on somebody lying to me. <laughs> I'm going to go sit my face in God's Bible and heal somewhere before I depend on your lie to make it through the day. <laughs> Does everybody see that now? So, this is the formula. How do we break past this spiritual war? How do we get victory in it? By doing something that's not attractive to the flesh. What are we reading here now? The 17th chapter of the book of Luke, verse 7. Isn't that right? Let's read now. But which of you, having a what? Plowing or feeding cattle, will say unto him by and by, when he has come from the field, go and sit down to meet, in other words, to eat, and will not rather say unto him, make ready wherewith I may sup, and gird thyself, and serve me, till I have eaten and drunken, and afterward thou shalt eat and drink. Doth he thank that servant, because he did the things which were commanded him? I trow not. In other words, I think not. So likewise, listen, if you want to defeat this devil of flattery in your life, what does he tell us to do? When ye shall have done all those things which are commanded you, say, we are unprofitable servants. We have done that which was our duty to do. Everybody see that now? That's how you get rid, that's how you win this battle of flattery. I'm unprofitable. I've only done what I was supposed to do. Does everybody understand that now? How many of you, when you got out of your car, you patted it? Patted on, oh, good, good boy, good boy. You got us here. That what you did? Why not? It did what it was supposed to do. And if, it, if you'd have broke down down the street, would you have been patting it? No, we're going to kick you. You didn't do what you were supposed to do. Does everybody understand that? We live in a generation today where people lose their minds over not getting pats for doing everyday stuff that they're supposed to do. I don't want to hear a man say, I'm taking care of my children. You're supposed to. The key word is my. <laughs> Does everybody understand that now? Yes, to me, that's the same thing like saying, y'all know I'm black? 
Y'all not going to clap for me? What y'all laughing for? Why y'all not worshiping? Is that what I'm supposed to be? So how in the world I'm, people look for accolades in every little thing? Does everybody understand that now? Yeah, you know, I take care of myself. I keep myself. I do my hair every day. What are you supposed to do? See, Walmart got a whole lot of folks' world flipped upside down with that foolishness. You, you can't go to Walmart now without seeing not only women, but men in pajamas. And we think because we put some shoes on, <laughs> we dress to the T. <laughs> I'm telling you, don't go by this world as a standard. Let this Bible be your standard. Does everybody see that now? So brothers and sisters, the spiritual, the spiritual war is real. And the devil will use any weapon. All you got to do, this whole Bible, all it is, is teaching us how to fight this spiritual war. And all you got to do is read in between the lines and it'll show you how the devil's coming. Jesus rejected the worship of this man that was full of the devil. Why? Because he knew you're just using flattery, sir, to try to take my attention off of what it's supposed to be on. You full of the devil. And I'm here to cast it out. And you know that. Does everybody understand? The same thing with this woman of divination. Why did she follow Paul around all those days? Because it was something, it was a presence there stronger than her. And so she was trying to deflect the attention off of herself. Never mind, I'm a witch. You are appointed and anointed of God. <laughs> it didn't take Paul to realize, no, uh-uh, something off with you, sister. You got a devil. Does everybody see that now? So the devil comes in many forms to war against the saints of God. And we have to listen. Let, so let's not be drunk on attention. Let's not be drunk on compliments. Let's get out of this mindset of people doing us wrong and all this. All of that, brothers and sisters, that's all a part of the warfare that we go through. Listen, and I want to make this clear. One of the last things you want to do in this war is make yourself a victim. Does everybody understand it now? Get out of that Cain complex. Everybody done, done you wrong and nobody understand you. I promise you, you're not the first you to live in this world. Does everybody understand that now? I'm saying when the devil come for you, make him work for it. Does everybody see? When I tussle with the devil, he leaves sweating. He ain't sitting down and let me do all the work. We fighting, and he gonna sweat. Does everybody understand that now? That's what my my stepfather, when I was growing up, that's what he he grew up telling us, and that's the way my brother and I were. He, my, my, I mean, my stepdad, he was real big on that, you know, uh, uh, you know, us fighting and standing up for ourselves. And I'm not saying that's a good thing, but that's what we did to survive when we were growing up, my brother and I. My stepfather told us when we were probably about 10, he said, listen, I don't want y'all ever to come home whipped. He said, I don't care how bad you be somebody, I'll pay for the hospital bill. And that's all we needed to hear. He said, I'm not telling you that you're going to win every fight, but people ought to at least know that they win a fight. Yes, sir. They will know, and we will carry it out, sir. <laughs> and I took that spiritually. The devil ain't just going to walk over me. He's going to have to fight. And he, if he do get a victory, he's going to go off and, and sit down somewhere and rest for a little while. Does everybody understand that now? And I'm going to wear him out, you see. And that ought to be our mindset. We are not to, the devil ought not to be sitting in the corner and making us work with offense. Making us work with flattery. We doing all the work in those things. And the devil just sitting back. Does everybody see? That's not God's will, brothers and sisters. And so we started off sharing all these things with you in the beginning to let you know if you are a part of this ministry, you are going to be under attack. 
Now that's, that's a given. There's no way in the world. Hell came against my mother's womb the way that he did. And then you sit here years later and you just go and just skedaddle on through and ain't nothing happening. You're going to be under attack just simply because. Does everybody see now? Three days ago, I was sitting in my living room and I just sitting there and I had a vision. In that vision, I saw a television appear before me and I saw, you know, you press the volume button, you see the volume graphic go up and I saw that volume graphic go up to number 32 and then it stopped and the TV disappeared. And so I knew right away that the Lord wanted me to go. And it's a book that I got, and he wanted me to go over chapter 32. And in that, in that chapter, of course, you know what book I'm talking about, the life story of William Branham. And in that chapter, um, it was a man that had sent uh, wanting William Branham to come pray for somebody right there in Memphis, in fact. And so um, William Branham uh, told the man, oh, the Lord's telling me that you're going to die. He gonna die. So he might be dead by the time you get back to the hospital. Then later on, uh, William Branham had a vision. And the Lord spoke to him and told him, you go pray for that man. Go tell him, call his wife and tell his wife he's gonna live. And uh, he's not gonna die. And so he went to, uh, he did that. And so the Lord reversed the fortune of this man to where he lived. And so I had that vision. I told my wife about it, and I was listening at that, listening at it. And I was praying, like, Lord, what are you telling me that for? What are you telling me that for? And then I, uh, the next day, I had an unction to go c come into the sanctuary and pray. So I prayed about it. Like, Lord, are you showing me this for something? And I don't want to miss it. What is it that you're showing me this? And so afterwards, the Lord spoke to me and said, you go read Numbers chapter 23. So we went, so I went and read it. And in that chapter is the chapter where Balak, the king, had commissioned Balaam to curse the children of Israel. And that's all that's going on in that chapter. Uh, in fact, let's go, let's go look at that just real briefly, just to give you an idea of it. There's a few things here I just wanted to show you just real briefly. Let's start, let's start reading verse uh, 1. Let's start reading verse 1. It says, And Balaam said unto Balak, Build me here seven altars, and prepare me here seven oxen and seven rams. And Balak did as Balaam had spoken. And Balak and Balaam offered on every altar a bullock and a ram. And Balaam said unto Balak, Stand by thy burnt offering, and I will go peradventure the Lord will come to meet me. And whatsoever he showeth me, I will tell thee. And he went to a high place. And God met Balaam, and he said unto him, I have prepared seven altars, and I have offered upon every altar a bullock and a ram. And the Lord put a word in Balaam's mouth and said, Return unto Balak, and thus thou shalt speak. And he returned unto him, and lo, he stood by his burnt sacrifice, he and all the princes of Moab, and he took up his parable and said, Balak, the king of Moab, had brought me from, the, from Aram out of the mountains of the east, saying, Come curse me, Jacob, and come defy Israel. How shall I curse whom God hath not cursed? Or how shall I defy whom the Lord hath not defied? 
For from the top of the rocks, I see him. And from the hills, I behold him. Lo, the people shall dwell alone and shall not be reckoned among the nations. Who can count the dust of Jacob and the number of the fourth of part of Israel? Let me die the death of the righteous and let me let my last end be like his. And Balak said unto Balaam, what hast thou done unto me? I took, t- took thee to curse mine enemies. And behold, thou hast blessed them altogether. And he answered and said, Must I not take heed to speak that which the Lord hath put in my mouth? Everybody see that? So if you continue to read this, you'll see this taking place over and over again. Balak hiring Balaam to curse the children of Israel. He takes them to the top of the mountain to look down on them. That don't work. Then he takes them down in the valley to look up at them. He's trying, and so what's going on is he's trying to find a breach in the children of Israel. Now, brothers and sisters, again, talking about the spiritual war, whenever you're in God's will and you're doing what God wants you to do, somebody is always observing, looking for a breach. All you got to do is say you you standing for righteousness and please don't tell people that you believe in that you can be perfect because people are going to look for a way for you not to be. Does everybody understand that now? And what they do is they they just like Balak hiring Balaam to speak against what God has ordained. Now, I, I, here's the thing and here's what I want you to see about it. Israel had their issues. This is at the same time that they are rejecting the food, wishing to God they were in the, back in Egypt with the flesh pot, you know, all of that. All of them 40 years, all of this is going on. And yet a prophet cannot Speak against them. God will not allow a curse to come against them. You know why? Because God's purpose for them was much higher than where they were at that time. Spiritually speaking. Does everybody understand that now? But when you have flesh looking in on spiritual matters, they think they can call it. Does everybody understand what I mean when I say that now? When you have flesh and all they're looking at is through their carnal minds, they're going to miss it every time. The man of God is going to be wrong and they're going to be right. The way he's doing things is wrong and they're right. And I'm telling you, you just like Balaam and Balak. Does everybody understand that now? Folks will even start thinking, you don't deserve to be up preaching. Right, what, who are you? Whatever you think you know, unknow it. Does everybody understand that now? Because I'm, I'm a witness to it. Uh, when God gets tired of it, he knows how to remove it. Whatever it may be. G- God is just. Does everybody understand that now? He upheld those people. I say he upheld them. Does everybody understand that now? At some point, we'll get to this place when we're spiritual. It ain't about us. God, God justifies whom he wills. Does everybody understand that now? Yeah, it ain't, it ain't about us. It ain't, it ain't about flesh and blood. Does everybody understand that now? And so, I, you know, I read that chapter again. Had to do with something being reversed. And even those, listen, even the wisdom of God in it. Uh, chapter 32 and then chapter 23. Does everybody see that now? Ain't nothing an accident with God. Nothing. So I was praying about, okay, y'all done read this chapter. Lord, what, what is it that you're saying to me? What does this have to do with me? The thing that caught my attention in this chapter was verse 20. Of, let's, let's back up to verse 19. God is not a man that he should lie, neither the son of man that he should repent. Have he said and shall he not do it? Or have he spoken and shall he not make it good? Behold, I have received commandment to bless and he has blessed and I cannot reverse it. 
So that's what was standing out to me, and I was trying to figure out, Lord, if I spoke something that's against your will, Lord, what is it, Lord? If I, if I have, I'd make it right. And then I got a call from Brother Linda yesterday evening, and he was saying three days ago, I think it was three days ago you said now, three days ago he was praying, and what did you hear that spirit say now? He's going to take his life in three days. This is the third day. And so when he told me that and he asked me, what did I think about it? What did I, what did I think about it? I said, I'll tell you what I think about it tomorrow. This is tomorrow. <laughs> so you're hearing about it today. So let me go more into detail. Why would a spirit tell him I'm going to take your life in three days? So I prayed about that. And this is what the Lord and I, do you all remember how I started? Remember I was, what I started off saying in his message? Don't take it, you don't take it a light thing to be sitting here. Many battles were fought for you all to be here, you see, and for me to be here. And so some years ago, uh, I was in the hospital. I had that heart attack. And, uh, of course, the devil had been trying to take my life. And Brother Linda was in Texas, and he was going to come straight up here. But when he heard I was in the hospital, he made a V-line and came to Louisiana where I was. Drove about, what was that, how many hours was that? About five or six hours to come to see me. And what he did was he rallied the troops together, you know, that were down there with me to, to pray for me. And he went to the surgeon himself. When I went into surgery, he went to the doctor him and himself and said, this man is an important man. Don't lose him. He means something to people. The devil saw it. Does everybody see that now? Again, brothers and sisters, you're not going to be a part of this ministry and not get attacked. The devil saw it. And I'm sure that he still prays for me. You see that? So the devil don't like it. So then the spirit says, you know what? Now, I want to make this clear. Devils can't just do things on their own here in this earth. They need bodies. It's some witch somewhere that's attacking him. It's somebody in their heart that want him dead. And all he's doing is hearing what somebody in their heart is saying. Now, brothers and sisters, I, I'm going to say this. Let's not think that the devil don't have any kind of weight in this world. When he want to kill somebody, he intend on doing it. It ain't, we can't just, just sweep under the breeze of, well, you know, I'm a child of God, so ain't nothing going to happen to me. We better pray. Because ain't nothing automatic. Does everybody understand that? And as soon as we get comfortable, the, de the Lord will allow the devil to come touch you to get you on your face. Yeah, yeah. Prayer life is what's needed. Does everybody understand that now? So let's not ride the wave of we children of God and we ain't going to go through nothing. If you really are a child of God, there's going to be some attacks. Sure enough, does everybody understand that now? Uh, got a brother overseas that uh, I talked to a couple of weeks ago that called me with an attack. He was having an attack. And uh, we were talking about it, and he said, you know, the Lord just spoke to me and said that this attack is because I'm tied to you. Yeah, I don't doubt it. So if you're here, you better be real about it. Does everybody understand what I'm saying now? Yeah, if you hear, you better be real, brothers and sisters, because the, the attack is coming. Does everybody understand that now? And so now... The purpose of this, what the law was showing me was, we had to reverse this attack, because it ain't automatic. It can't just be because you're a child of God. You can be a child of God and die today and go to heaven. Or you can continue to live in this earth like the way God intended. Does everybody see? Brothers and sisters, let's not be lazy about this war that we're in. Quit assuming that everything is just automatic. Some people leave here before their time because they refuse to engage the enemy. Does everybody understand that now? I sincerely believe that the Lord had laid it on Brother Linda's heart to come to, my, to the hospital I was in and talk to that doctor and tell him, look, this is an important man. We don't want to lose him. He means something to other people here. He's a man of God, and we want you to do whatever you can. 
Because I want you to think about it. What does a doctor care? He's going to get paid anyway. What does a doctor care? They lose patients every day. Who are you to live? So somebody had to come stand in that gap that way. This is an important man. Don't you lose him. And, and, and six, five of it was saying it. Yeah. <laughs> yes, sir. We're, we're going to do the best. <laughs> <laughs> Does everybody understand that now? So what was the kingdom of darkness saying? Who are you? We done went to work all of this way to do this and that, and you making a V-line? Why didn't you go back to Tennessee? All right, I got something for you. Does everybody see that now? So right now, in the name of Jesus Christ, we pronounce life Amen. over Brother Linda's life. And we reverse everything that the enemy sent his way to take his life. Anything that's going on in his body that's adverse to the nature of God in it, we cast it back to hell where it come from. We speak complete health complete strength we speak peace of mind over his life that the Lord will give him divine health and divine strength to continue to carry out the work that God have called him to carry out that the Lord will strengthen him in his life in his heart in his mind in his emotions that he will be f led by the Spirit of God in all that he do. We pray God's hedge of protection around his life. Every car accident that the devil have set up, we expose it right now. Every evil thing that was spoken against him, we send it back to the individuals that spoke it. And we pray God's mercy on their lives. We speak life. We speak health over his life. And we thank God that he will perform his words that he spoke today. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Now, before we close, I just want to mention this about it. Why did the Lord bring those things to me concerning what was going on with Brother Linder? Tell you why. Because he had to match power for power. Does everybody understand that now? It's some which somewhere that's very high ranking in that kingdom. When God has to use a prophet to speak something different. Does everybody understand that now? This wasn't just some, some peon somewhere, just with bad thoughts. This was somebody that know exactly what they're doing. And they are high ranking. They know that they're a witch. Does everybody, I mean high ranking. Does everybody understand that now? And that's one thing we better understand, brothers and sisters. In this spiritual war, sergeants don't fight generals. Does everybody understand that now? Yeah, no, they don't fight generals, see. And so that's why the Lord wants me to speak those things. Now, my prayer for you all concerning this, that you will realize that you're in a spiritual war as well. And th this is the reason why it's important, brothers and sisters, that you stay close to the one that's feeding you. That's the reason why that's important. Because if Brother Linda hadn't been close to me like he's supposed to be, the Lord wouldn't have showed me no vision. He wouldn't have spoke no word. You just out there on your own, you handle it. And, and does everybody understand that? And so uh, that's the reason why. That's the reason why the devil works so hard to get people offended at me. 
because he knows once you get offended at me and I'm, and I'm discipling you, you done lost your cover. You have nothing out there. You just like a child in the wilderness trying to make it, you see. That's not God's will, you see. This, this what you just witnessed, this is a, 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 a part of what being in covenant looks like. If you stand with me, then I can be a blessing to you. Does everybody understand that now? Yeah, the, the, I can be a blessing to you. And uh, we don't want anybody out there just out and about without any covering and things like that. That's the purpose of, of having a cover. All right. Uh, my prayer is that something was said that blessed you today. And uh, that you will uh, really take heed of what you heard, that you will be better prepared for the spiritual water we're in. All right, now. That's all now. We'll go in this mission in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. My prayer is that you will all go in peace.